Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another Top 5 Friday. Today we are talking about my Top 5 coming of age novels not written by Stephen King and not the girl next door. Um, every time you hear about best coming of age, you hear about uh, Stephen King's It or The Body or numerous, some, some people even say a dream catcher because of the flashback scenes. Um, but I'm going to not include those books. I'm not going to include uh, The Girl Next Door by Jack Ketchum either. I'm going to try and give you guys uh, options that are not the most popular. One of them I know for a fact that it's probably on everybody's list. Uh, not everybody, but it's going to be on quite a few people's list. But I, I can't help but to include it. Now, um, the the inspiration for today's post is fi we're finally getting... If there's other ones available, I do not know. I haven't read them. I haven't been able to find them. But we're finally getting a uh, coming of age about a group of girls called the Dead Girls Club by Damien Angelica Walters. I'm super excited about that one. It's coming out on December 10th in hardcover, ebook, audiobook, I think all that. Um, I got an ARC from um, NetGalley and the publisher, so I'm going to be getting to that well before December. Um, I'm super excited about it. I'll probably be getting to it maybe maybe as soon as next week. Uh, who knows how long it'll take me to read it, because I think it's like 400 some odd pages, but um, I'm definitely going to be getting to it soon. Let's go ahead and jump into it. The first one, I, these aren't really in any kind of order. Uh, and now looking at it, I know at least two of these are going to probably be on a whole lot of people's lists. But uh, I know one of them is going to come out of left field, going to come out of nowhere. I got a bug flying around here. It's just a moth, I think. But the uh, first one is Boy's Life by Robert McCammon. Uh, this is this is an easy pick, of course. Uh, it's one of the it's one of the best coming of age novels. Of course, it's just a fantastic novel overall. And if you haven't read it, I highly highly recommend you do. There are uh, the complaints that I do hear when I when I do hear a complaint is usually sometimes uh, they, they complain about it being overwritten for what it is. Uh, I don't agree with that. I think it's very sparse for what it is. Um, maybe not as sparse as or or stark or succinct as a Jack Ketchum um, kind of novel or one or two of the other ones on this list, but it is. I don't think it's overly wordy, um, especially not compared to some of his other stuff, like Usher's Passing, which I just finished. is definitely uh, nowhere near as wordy as that one. But this one is a fantastic novel about a little boy growing up in Zephyr, Alabama. I think, I'm pretty sure Zephyr is 100% uh, make-believe uh, that it's a fictional town, you know, like Derry, Derry, Maine, and Castle Rock and all that stuff. But, uh... Boy's Life is on here. It's it's just the it's just the saga feel of it. There's there's so much life crammed into this one story, and so much goes on. And one of the coolest coolest parts of it is the alligator, um, the alligator and the the wasp. There's a lot of stuff in here that you that as a boy I ran into myself. Now I didn't run into alligators. But everybody has a story around their hometown about the monster in the water or the monster in the woods kind of thing. And what McCammon did for Zephyr was create that monster in the water, and I really, really enjoyed that aspect of it. Alright, um, let's go with the other obvious one. I almost dropped books all over the place. Uh, Summer of Night by Dan Simmons. You can see this. this is a fantastic cover. Unfortunately, I don't have a really good version of it. Um... And the version that's available now has a really ugly, boring cover. It's like uh, just foggy, kind of like a foggy night, foggy morning kind of deal. But this one's pretty cool. It has the, uh, the uh, is it die cut? I don't know. But it's the cut hole in it. And then you've got this gorgeous bit. Yeah. Very, very nice. I'd love to, if, if there is a, come on, focus, focus. You going to focus? Stay focused. Um... If there is a like signed limited edition to this book, I'd love to get my hands on a copy because there's so many, uh, especially like the rendering truck, uh, the roadkill truck. Sorry, my nose is itching. Um, I, I would love to see pictures of all all of that stuff, especially like the the, the school and whatnot. Um, this also has one of the most surprising character deaths 
ever that I've ever come across. Um, this and Song of Kali, Dan Simmons really knows how to uh, kill his darlings. Now that, that term is actually used for writing, you know, getting rid of your fancy language or whatever, or sections that you really, really like, but he gets rid of very popular characters and he's, he was, he's long been an inspiration for my own work because of that. If you've ever read any of my work, you'll know that nobody is safe. That's the same way in a Dan Simmons novel. Uh, next up, maybe uh, on quite a few lists also, but less so than the other two, is The Traveling Vampire Show by Richard Lehman. This, in my opinion, is Lehman's best novel. It's his most mature work. Um, and that's saying something, because the book is still very, very immature. But I think there's a lot of theme. He played with theme um, and that kind of thing with, with the book. And the ending especially is fantastic. It comes out of nowhere. You're thinking, okay, well, this is just going to be your typical, you know, layman uh, gore porn fest here at the end. And then you get to the very last couple pages and you're like, holy shit, wait, well, what? What? <laughs> uh, Layman didn't do too many twist endings, um, and if he did, they were either phoned in or they were so off the wall as to be considered cheats. Um, you know, just fixing something there at the end with either, uh, well, he rarely uses supernatural, but fixing something with the, with the most outlandish uh, poss possible conclusion. Uh, this one is outlandish, but I... I find it exceedingly awesome with what he did there at the end. Um, it just it comes out of nowhere and it fits thematically with the rest of the book. Next up is one of my personal favorites that has somehow withstood the test of time. Um, if you're a fan of the channel, you know how I feel about this author nowadays. In fact, we're doing a whole series on his stuff as I go back and reread through his stuff. But the voice of the night by Dean Koontz. This is one of the first uh, coming-of-age novels I ever read uh, that I actually, you know, sat down and read. You know, I, I had seen Stand By Me, which is based on The Body by Stephen King, and Goonies and all that stuff. I had seen those movies, but I had never actually read one until I read this one. Oddly enough, I bought this because it has a train on the cover, and I was a huge fan of trains when I was a kid. I still am a fan of trains, but I've never actually been on a train, so that that's weird. I, it's probably more along the lines of you know something something I I can nev not never have, but um, something that I haven't experienced. It's one of those things. Also, my grandfather, uh, not my blood grandfather, but um, the one that married my grandmother after my real grandfather died. Um, he his son. His son, Scott, owned the train that was used in Back to the Future. He also did all that. Uh, he did several, several movies because um, he owned his own trains. He did his own stunt work. He drove the trains. He did all of that stuff. Um, and I thought that was a pretty cool little tidbit. But uh, I can't remember. His, I guess it's his, Scott Clark is the guy's name um, because my grandfather's name was Jim Clark. I don't think that's going to give anything away because Jim's been dead for a long time. So anyways, but uh, and anybody who knows Jim, uh, hang on, anybody who knows Jim, my head's itching completely. Anybody who knows Jim already knows who I am just by the look, so I ain't too worried about it. But yeah, uh, The Voice of the Night uh, finally is one that's going to come out of nowhere for a lot of people, especially since y'all know that I don't like YA. Um, I don't like young adult. I feel that the writing is usually too dumbed down um, or too simplistic or the themes are too heavy-handed. Uh, I also don't like that it's called YA, called young adult. Um, I don't believe in, in young adult or new adult or any of that stuff. Um, I, I Not that I will believe like it's a figment of my imagination, but I don't agree with um, labeling these things that um, not even so much maybe maybe middle grade is fine of course children's books are fine but uh, middle grades even kind of floating it because with wonder wonder was a fantastic novel um, and it wasn't written in that dumbed down way that even King Stephen King has had a problem with when he tried to do the eyes of the dragon 
it came off as him writing down to people. And one of the only authors that I know of, I know of, I know there's probably more out there, people, but I know of, is Andrew Smith. Uh, he wrote Winger Standoff, I think is the sequel, and this utter joy, Grasshopper Jungle. This was a impulse buy. You see how... It, yeah, I love... Uh, not gilded, but I love painted edges, and this one kind of just called from me, call, called to me from the uh, from the shelves at uh, one uh, Barnes and Noble in Mobile, Alabama. It was sitting there, and I saw the beautiful. It, I pulled it out, and I saw this, and I was like, I have to have it. I don't. I don't care what what it uh what it's about. And then oddly enough, I got home and I read <laughs> I read a list of the best current uh, YA authors, and they were talking about uh, Andrew Smith. I, I read the book over the course of like three days. I blew right through it, and I fell in love with it. Um, it also has LGBTQIA themes. It's got all different kinds of wonderful stuff in it. Um, it is also super, super brutal. Um, I enjoyed the horror aspect of it. And yes, it is about gigantic, not grasshoppers, um, it is about gigantic, like, praying mantis-esque type of creatures. In fact, I think they actually are praying mantises um, that have grown <laughs> into uh, human size, uh, or else they were, it's human beings turned into praying mantises. Uh, but there's a sequel coming. The book is fantastic. Um, if you have not read it, you need to go out and check it out. If you haven't read Andrew Smith at all, you need to go check out Andrew Smith. If, you, if you're not too into the weird side of things, then definitely pick up Winger. Um, that, that's a fantastic novel, and that ending just utterly destroyed me. There's also uh, a thousand or a million something steps. or It's got a horse on the cover, whatever it is. But uh, he's got a bunch of other stuff that I haven't read. The only three that I have read is uh, are this one, Winger, and Standoff. But I highly recommend his stuff just because of the way he writes. Um, he, he's got this, he, he almost like a male Caroline Kepnes. So if you enjoy Caroline Kepnes' writing style, you're definitely going to like Andrew Smith. So, my challenge to you is, without using Jack Ketchum's The Girl Next Door, without using Stephen King, without using those ones that you hear about all the time, yeah, I know I did, I, I did Boy's Life and that's kind of cheating, but um, without using those ones that are used all the time, what are your favorite coming of age novels? Let me know down there in the doobly-doo, but until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another Top 5 Friday, I'll talk to you guys later, Bye bye